and artist drink cocktails. I'm your host, Katie Phillips. Whether you're an artist, a collector, or anyone who appreciates originality, this show's for you. Today, I'm gonna to go visit Wendy Mitchell. Wendy has made some big life changes recently, including going back to college to earn her art degree. I also wanna learn how she connects with her art on a more spiritual level and get a demo of her cyanotype printing process. And I am with Wendy Mitchell, and she has made us a very delicious rosemary lemon drop martini. So tell me about this delicious drink. I will. So I actually made um, Katie the rosemary lemon drop, and I did a ginger lemon drop. Um, and actually on Wednesday nights, um, uh, me and my girlfriends, we go to Ips, which is in Roswell, downtown Roswell, because on Wednesdays they do $5 martinis, and who doesn't like a $5 martini? I don't know anybody. <laughs> right? Whenever I do have a drink, I find that I am a lot less inhibited, mm -hmm. so it, um, well, I don't always recommend drinking before you do your art. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it can definitely bring out a different side of you that maybe you didn't yeah a little bit there you know i feel like um because I, I do that you know with my own art and then the next day i look at it and i'm like what was that thing <laughs> <laughs> so tell me how did you become an artist mm. well i would say i have been creating my whole life right you know um there was a story about this one time where i was literally painting on the walls <laughs> with things that we're not going to talk about but <laughs> i would I think I was three or four and decided that my mother's velvet dining room chairs needed to be colored on with her lipstick. Oh. And I literally colored on every single one of them. <laughs> she was not sure if she was supposed to be more mad at me or the maid that was supposed to be watching. <laughs> Probably the maid, but um, we'll go with that. Um, and then there was another time where I drew on the wall um, through, again, she had silk wallpaper. What was she thinking? I was the youngest <laughs> of four. Who does that? So, you think um, she would have learned by the time she got to It's probably <laughs> all within a span of a couple days. I don't know. I don't actually remember doing this, but I drew on the wall with a ballpoint pen all the way um, from the kitchen, through the dining room, up the stairs, but I went to my brother's room instead. <laughs> <laughs> As if he would have done it because he's so not creative. So funny. You recently made the decision, which I think is very cool, uh, to go back to college and get your fine art degree. So tell me uh, what inspired you to do that? Yeah. Um, well, um, it's interesting because I am definitely what they would call the non-traditional student. I am always the oldest in the class. <laughs> Not always, but most of them. Maybe, maybe the wisest student. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm usually <laughs> the same age as a teacher, um, which is pretty fun. Um, but I, you know, I never finished college. I went to school. Um, my, my college career when I was a teenager was um, tumultuous, if you will. I changed my major like four times. I started as a vocal performance major, went into interior design. I was at Florida State, got my two-year AA degree, and then chose to move back to Atlanta because that's where I was born. And um, had a lot of family here. And so I actually applied to the Atlanta College of Art mm -hmm. and was accepted. And then, I don't know about you, but somewhere in the back of my head, I heard somebody tell me it wasn't worth it. Hmm. It was too expensive. What are you gonna do with that degree? I don't know, something kept me from going. Yeah. And so that was sort of my sliding door moment, right? Like I I wonder, and I probably will write a novel about this one day, what would my life be look like had I stayed? Yeah. And had I actually pursued that? Because I think of all the things that I wish I had done, I wish I had finished that. Yeah. Um, Cause that would've been really cool. But you know, now I look at it, I'm like, I have so much more life experience. And so my art now is probably so different than it would have been mm -hmm. when I was 19. So I decided to go back to school. I thought, you know, why not? I turned 50 this year and you know, you're never too old, right? Mm -hmm. And I feel like if we stop learning, we stop growing, True. we stop living. So I'm a firm believer in continuing to learn and grow. And I'm um, actually um, on the Dean's list right now. Oh, so that's great. So proud. I love it. I was never on the Dean's list when I was in school the first time. But um, yeah, so I love uh, I love school. Um, I finished up. I actually went ahead and applied to the College of Art, not knowing I had time mm -hmm. to 
of weight, but I went, I had plenty of work. I mean, I've had nine, 10 years worth of work that I could pick through um, to put in my portfolio and I was accepted into the College of Art. And um, so I'm, I'm finished up all of my basic classes. Mm -hmm. And so now I am going into the upper level art classes. So you think you're, uh, you'll have your degree by end of the year? I, I should have it by the, by the end of the year uh -huh. of 2021. If not, it would be spring 2022. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So you're, uh, yeah. you're like, you're like done. this close. Yeah. <laughs> this close. And I don't want to quit, right? I don't, I feel like yeah. I need to finish what I started uh -huh. and um, whether or not I, you know, pursue something in art or not, I will have a degree. Yeah. Right. And I, I think, um, while there are a lot of reasons you don't need a degree, um, for me, it was important. Yeah. So, yeah. so tell me, what have been some of your favorite um, classes or projects mm -hmm. that you've that you've done? I really actually enjoyed um, the. Um, oh gosh, I can't remember the name of the class. It was like. Um, Oh, Concept Creativity and Studio Practice okay. was what it was called. And it was probably not a class that I needed for my degree, but I'm glad that I took it because it really um, stretched me in a way that I would not have been stretched. Mm -hmm. um, we did a lot of very different kind of um, projects. We had some group projects, uh, but probably my favorite um, project of that class, well, there was two. Um, one was the book project. Um, we had to do an altered book project where we took a book and we altered it to mm -hmm. do something else. Um, and I still made a book, but I took a book apart and created something else. And so I made a stand for it out of tree mm -hmm. stumps, kind of. And um, it had a tree theme in it. And um, it was sort of kind of a, for me, it was a transformation from me as a baby to me as a 50 year old, right? So um, that was kind of cool. And then, um, the last project we could do anything we wanted <clears throat> so I actually took one of my cyanotype prints and had um, I went to spoon flower and took that print and created fabric out of it so I used a modern jersey knit fabric and you know kind of mirrored it and stuff and came up with this really cool um, fabric and then had a friend and her sister-in-law helped me make the dress. Oh, very so cool. So oh, I yeah. wore my art. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah, I think I remember seeing a picture. Yeah. Yeah, so it was funny because it, it had been cold, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so I wore my dress and I put on a coat because I thought, okay, it's been cold. That day it was hot. <laughs> Not hot, but it was definitely warmer, right? And it was mm -hmm. warm in the classroom. And but I wanted it to be this big reveal, so I just asked the teacher, I was "Like, can I go first? Because it's really hot. <laughs> I'm wearing my art." He goes, "Yes." So, and that was really fun because the kids were all super excited to see what I created. Yeah, and it's like you take the coat off. It's like this <laughs> reveal. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, so that was really fun. Um, and then I would say probably um, the drawing classes have been great. Um, I particularly. Um, I really loved one of my professors, Rebecca Brown. She um, she and I um, got to know each other really well because we actually ended up, I took two of her classes. Mm -hmm. So I took drawing one from her and then I also took um, 2D design and color theory. Um, and she really um, inspired me and pushed me and we're the same age so that was fun that we could connect that way. Um, but she really helped me kind of think outside the box. So, um, so I, I remember um, you talking. We we spoken before about how you feel like um, you are, you create, and it's an extension of your connection with the Creator. Tell me about your spiritual connection with your art. Yeah. So, um, I I've learned to really let go of my perfectionism. Um, I know I'm not gonna cry, <laughs> um, but I you know. I find that my best work comes when I am inspired by the Holy Spirit, when I am inspired by God and creating something that I might not normally create if I just did it on my own, right? Yeah. So it's a lot of listening. It's a lot of, um, particularly when you're painting, it's a lot of listening and a lot of not listening to yourself, right? Because yeah. your your inner critic is constantly saying, oh, don't do that, oh, don't do that, oh, nobody will like that, right? And so it's letting go of that inner critic enough to be able to just throw it on there, right? Which is why yeah. um, I told you earlier, I'm definitely a fly by the seat of my pants kind of girl. I don't like to plan certain things, um, but I will say, when I learned how to start making cyanotypes, it was, I can't remember, I think it was 2018. Mm -hmm. um, 
March maybe, and I did it and I was hooked and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to do this every day. And what was cool about it is that I couldn't control the process, right? I could, I can paint the paper and I can put the leaves on there and I can put the chemicals on there. But from there, it's not up to me anymore. It's it's really what what's God gonna do with the sun mm -hmm. and how and how is that gonna you know create all my paper? Right. So it was really learning to let go, and it was really for me probably the first um, art that I was creating that I wasn't creating on my own. Mm -hmm. That I really it was a partnership with God yeah. and just creating together. Yeah. So um, you know, and it was very abstract too because I've always wanted to be abstract, but never felt like I could be, and this. In this medium, I can be totally abstract yeah. and, and just throw it on there and see what happens. Yeah. The creative process doesn't have to be perfect. Yeah. Right? The creative process is everybody's different and, and you become whoever you're supposed to be in that process. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and didn't you have some work um, at the airport, the Atlanta I airport? Did. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my daughter is, my oldest is a flight attendant for Delta. Mm -hmm. And so um, she was basically an airport employee. And she had noticed in the airport that they had signs for this art contest or um, juried art show. Uh -huh. And it was open to um, employees and their immediate family. So mm -hmm. her immediate family. Mm -hmm. So she said, Mom, you really should enter this. Mm -hmm. So I sent in two pieces. <coughs> Excuse me. And they were both accepted, oh. which was pretty cool. Um, but they were two of my favorite pieces. One of them was called Lanier Scuppanons, which Scuppanons, some people know as Muscadines, oh, yeah. um, but we call them scu Scuppanons. <laughs> and the little Scuppanons, they were teeny tiny, so they hadn't really grown, right? Um, but I put them on the paper and um, sprayed some stuff on it, and literally, I think I left it on that paper for two days. Um, so it really turned out really cool because it was more of a, an overexposure and mm -hmm. you can see the paint, the one behind here, it, when it's overexposed, it becomes green mm -hmm. and yellow and all these colors. And then the other one that I did, I used um, Japanese maples and I took soapy lemon water and literally I took a spoon and just kind of went, swirled it all over the paper and then I put the glass down and it smashes it, you know, so the bubbles are kind of still there mm -hmm. and you clip it and I put it out in the sun, morning sun, and I want to say, I think probably it was there for an hour at mm -hmm. most. It wasn't very long because the sun wasn't very bright um, and it turned out really cool and um, that was called swirls mm -hmm. and so um, because it was a jury show, my the Scuffinon piece actually um, got second place oh, in the professional cool. division. So yeah. that's pretty cool. I won a couple hundred bucks, so that was fun. Okay. And then the other one, the airport purchased. Oh, that's great. So yeah, <laughs> so uh, you probably will never see it unless you go to the offices because it's going to be in somebody's office. Uh -huh. um, but note, <laughs> the airport purchased that. Uh, they told me they wanted to purchase it in like July. I've not been thinking. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> She said it will happen, but um, <laughs> it's um, the city of Atlanta is challenging. So, mm -hmm. note to self. But no, I'm really excited about that piece being there, and it's just a real honor to be in that show and to be recognized. So yeah, that was cool. That was yeah. great. Yeah, and was it so? It was in a terminal, like where people got to walk mm -hmm. past. Like Actually, the two, my two, were in the domestic. Um, terminal before you even go into security. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. So, wait, thousands of people got yeah. to see your work. That's yeah. really cool. And it was up a lot longer thanks to the pandemic. So, yeah. it was only supposed to be up for like three months and it ended up being up for more like six. Yeah. So, that was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, I am just kind of dying to see this whole process with the Sienna type. So, will you like show me how you do it? Definitely. So, we're gonna we're gonna take a trip to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> you get to come with us. So, it'll be exciting. <laughs> actually a cameraless photography process so you're gonna create pictures of things without a camera which is pretty cool um, I always recommend gloves that keeps your hands from getting dry because the chemicals can be pretty harsh you do want the type A and type B they are sold together it's a powder form and then you add water and you shake it up um, they do recommend that you wait 24 hours to use it but I've never done that it hasn't really mattered so much 
so we're not gonna worry about that today, but you're gonna, what we'll do is um, mix equal parts. So I'll do probably a couple of capfuls of each in this dish. It's a dish I'm not gonna use again because you're not gonna wanna have chemicals on anything else. I do recommend one of these Sakura, I think it's called a Sakura brush. Um, these Japanese brushes are like $6. I love that it's really easy to paint the chemicals on the paper. We'll look at that in a minute. Um, I do use a really good cold press watercolor paper. Um, there are other things that I have used before, um, but I do like the watercolor paper. And since I couldn't find my plain one, we're using some, we're gonna use the back. So it's all good. Um, and normally I would use glass, but today we're going to try um, just using some saran wrap when we put it outside. So once the paper's dry, we'll be able to go outside and I'll show you how to apply the leaves and things like that. So, um, and then I, I do recommend having a board or something like that. So when you are painting your paper, you're not getting it on everything. Okay? Okay. So we're gonna head into the bathroom. Okay, so this part is done in the dark, right? Yes, it is. So okay. I will use my phone. The great thing about your phones is that you can create a red light with your phone. So it's in accessibilities in your settings and then you go to display and text size and then you're gonna choose color filters and we're gonna put it on and it's red. So then what I'm gonna make sure is that my brightness is all the way up so that when we're in the dark, you're gonna see the red light. thing for me is that I get to be me right like I get to bear my soul without anybody actually knowing it mm -hmm. um, and unless I talk about it right so um, I love I love the healing mm -hmm. aspect of art for me yeah definitely yeah for the last 10 years has been super healing for me right and particularly in the last two uh, to three years has been extremely healing and therapeutic for mm -hmm. me so yeah that's great yeah. um, so is there anything that you don't like being an artist um, you know I think if, if I cared more about what people thought then I would probably say the hardest thing about being an artist is seeing all the reproductions mm -hmm. out there and how people aren't willing to pay for real art right original art um, that they're more willing to go get, um, you know, print of something and be happy with it than actually purchasing something, one that helps someone 
create a living and two, somebody that put their heart and soul in it rather than it being printed on a press. So yeah, yeah that's probably the thing I don't like the most. Yeah. Um, are there any uh, misconceptions out there um, about artists that you uh, would like to correct? Mm, gosh, I'd have to, mm -hmm. we probably have to talk about that for a while, but you know, I think probably um, one is they're a starving artist everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, somebody said something the other day, they said, you know, if you do what you love, the money will follow. And if it doesn't, it's okay because you're still happy. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know, that is true, right? Like I would rather be poor and happy than rich and miserable. What, uh, what's one thing on your artist bucket list that you hope to accomplish one day? Mm -hmm. um, well, we were kind of talking about this earlier, but I really would like to do a travel series of cyanotypes. I okay. think that would be really fun, um, which is why I'm kind of trying to come up with a way that I can travel with my cyanotypes mm -hmm. um, and not have to use saran wrap. <laughs> um, so, you know, going to different places and picking indigenous um, plants in that area and creating a cyanotype. So it's sort of like a living journal, if you will. Yeah, that's really I cool. think that would be really awesome. Yeah, I, yeah. Love, I love that idea. And then have a really cool cocktail um, table yeah. book or something. That's yeah. awesome. Okay, so fun question that um, I've really enjoyed <laughs> asking. Um, if you can invite anyone over for a cocktail, living or dead, mm. who would you invite over? Hmm. No, Adam Levine keeps coming to my dad. I want to invite him over. <laughs> Definitely invite him over. I might not invite him to stay. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, I don't know. I love, he's so talented as an artist, and mm -hmm. it would be really cool to sit down with him. And even though he's not an art, you know, a visual artist, he yeah, is a musical uh, artist, and yeah. I think it would be really cool to sit down with him. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I think also I would love to meet Anna Aiken. She was the one who came up with cyanotypes. Oh, I yeah. think that would be really cool yeah. to meet her and mm -hmm. understand how she figured this out. <laughs> how cool is that? Yeah. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Great choice. <laughs> and if you invite Adam Levine over, I can come I'll be right? sure to invite <laughs> you. <laughs> Most definitely. <laughs> Not sure he'll come, but you know, what's your favorite drink, Adam? We'll be sure to make it. <laughs> um, what's next for your art? Do you have anything mm -hmm. on the horizon? Um, yes, so I am actually, it's funny, I, when I made the choice to step out in faith and choose to go down to three days a week for a class, mm -hmm. one of the reasons I did that was I was kind of praying about it and figuring out, okay, can I do this? And I, I feel like I had a God nudge that same day I left church and a friend of mine texted me and said, hey, are you still doing pet portraits? And I said, yes, she does. Well, I'd like another one. And so that went from that one to three more. So oh. I had four done before the holidays. And then I've got three more on the horizon. Mm -hmm. um, so that, and then of course school. Right. And it starts on the 11th. So I'm going to be super busy, but yeah. I'm excited about it. Well, that's yeah. great. It sounds like you've got a lot going for yeah. you right now. So Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's a year of um, self-healing and yeah. figuring out what I want. So, yeah. That's good. And you're going out there and getting it. Amen. <laughs> Can't wait for anybody else. Yep. Yeah. Well, thank you so yeah. much for having me You're today. Welcome. I Cheers. really enjoyed talking to you. Wendy. You too. Thanks, Katie. <laughs> yes. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>